and welcome to The Third Sector. I'm your host, Tamara Brinkman. In our society, there are three sectors, the public, the private, and the nonprofit, and it's that third sector that we're here to talk about today. Joining me on today's show will be Misty Hollis, who is the executive director of the Richmond Family YMCA, and then we also have Jenny McCarroll, Director of Prevention Services from Firefly. First, we have Misty with us. Misty, thank you so much for it's joining good to be here. the show. Yeah, very good to be here. I think the last time I was with you was on Zoom. Yes, before they had me come into a studio. Yep. Yes, they so got me community. into it on Zoom. I'm like, yeah, sure. And then one day they're like, oh, well, now you have to come back to in person. And I was like, oh, okay. You did a good job. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, so we're so happy to have you here. Give us the history of Richmond Family YMCA. Mm -hmm. How long has it been in Richmond? So it is the oldest serving youth organization in Richmond. It's been over, I think we're close to 130 years at this point. Wow. Yeah, so, um, and of course when it began, it was just for men only, and across the street eventually became the Young Women's Christian Association. Um, the mission is still the same. It's, mm -hmm. it's taking Christian principles and helping people become better in their health, whether it's mind, spirit, or body. Mm -hmm. And um, we do that through through three components, really. I mean, our, the, our local Y does this in three components. One is supporting our families through child care, mm -hmm. um, after school, and, and now, as you will talk some on early learning. Mm -hmm. And then um, engaging kids through youth sports, so the physical part of being active, learning to be responsible at an early age, early age and um, learning to work through conflict and goal setting at a very early age as well. And then the third piece is that health and fitness side. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's still there. I mean, mm -hmm. it's been the um, beginnings of the why really stem back to Engl it's England, in England. And it was a man that was worried about veterans and addictions mm. and opened up a homeless shelter. And then he started realizing health and fitness needed to be a part of their recovery process. Mm -hmm. And so that's when it started moving into the health side of things. So okay. it's, yeah, it's really, it's an interesting history and <clears throat> for us to still be able to fulfill a component of that history is still very important to us. Yeah. yeah. Um, interesting that what it was based off of are still the things that we're dealing with today, 130 it is. some odd years later, right? Yeah, so it is. Addiction, health, mm -hmm. fitness, needing to get you know, yeah. folks out there and understanding that um, times change and they march on, but they don't necessarily, um, sometimes the problems still follow us mm -hmm. through. So, well, tell us a little bit about um, kind of what's going on with mm -hmm. the why these days. Maybe are there any goals or new things in the next six months to a year yeah. that you guys are, are looking for? When I got there eight years ago, really looking at what are the community needs and mm -hmm. are we fulfilling those needs as an organization? <clears throat> the youth sports piece was still very important to the community, and so we continued to build on that and grow that component. But what became mindful of us eight years ago was how do we support our families and the working families, and the child care component just kept coming up over and mm -hmm. over again. So um, we focused really just on a very specific component of after school care in our school buildings. Mm -hmm. um, United Way was a big part of the partnership for us to get Liberty and still is. United Way still supports our Liberty relationship. They just didn't have anything in Liberty and so we um, serve, we have about 30 kids that are registered there. On average it's about 22 a day that we have in after school care there. Mm -hmm. And then um, Richmond has always been in existence. There's always been child care in Richmond for us at Charles. And then we have expanded into Northeastern. Okay. So now we have two sites at Northeastern. We have after school site there and then we have a pre at their pre K building we also serve families there. So in total between all four of those after school sites, it's almost two hundred kids and families kids. that we're serving in that capacity. And the difference of of you know how is that different from a from what might be a why is it called child care? Mm -hmm. And the main issue is that we follow state standards mm -hmm. on what is required by the state mm -hmm. on how we care for the child and specifically that one adult to 15 kid ratio for Got school it. age. Mm -hmm. So um, we it's a very personalized relationship building, safe environment that we want to create and follow the state standards mm -hmm. for child care um, capacities. 
Um, then we just, the board kept looking at making sure they do a great job at check, you know, are we, ch let's check ourselves, are mm -hmm. we still doing what we need to do? And so as our youth sports has continued to grow, and that's about anywhere between four to 600 kids a year, depending wow. on our um, capacity and what we're serving, and it's just been phenomenal to see that continued growth. But on the child care side, um, we expanded into Cambridge City with a relationship. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll, I'll kind of stop there if, if you wanted to add anything to those conversations. No, I, I say keep going with that. I think, <laughs> um, I think it's great for people to understand <clears throat> how wide your guys' footprint is mm -hmm. um, in support of the community needs. So mm -hmm. talking about that you have, you know, you do take a look at what those community needs are and then your good work and reputation has, um, you know, brought, as you mentioned, a mm -hmm. partner to want to have you guys be who stewards and runs there, the West, you know, the, the, Cambridge, Wayne. Si the Cambridge City serving Western w Wayne, yeah. which is previously was considered a child care desert. Correct. Meaning there is nothing in the area that's accessible for people, easily accessible, mm -hmm. close to them, reasonably close to mm -hmm. them to be able to have child care. So yeah. the why being out there has been a big answer to um, to that issue in that community. And we celebrate too the Boys and Girls Club being there because what we did was open a uh, early learning center inside Western Wayne school system and mm -hmm. their elementary building. And so it's a very unique partnership between Sugar Creek um, Manufacturing, mm -hmm. Western Wayne, and the YMCA. And we um, service, in exchange for rent, we service Western Wayne employees in addition to service the Sugar Creek employees first. They're mm -hmm. our main priority. Right. After that, then we open up to the community. But our only age that we went to was five. Mm -hmm. And our capacity there, we have a waiting list. I mean, at this point, we're at 40, 42 kids that we serve. We're licensed for 48. Um, and our infant room is full with eight, and then we have a waiting list of four already, and then all of our toddler rooms have waiting list. Right. So, could, I mean, we could easily grow um, on that side of the, of the county. And then the Boys and Girls Club opened up a site there that's mm -hmm. really servicing that first grade and above, which has been a huge help mm -hmm. for Western Wayne. They just right. didn't, as you said, they didn't have anything. Yeah. So um, the Goal Ace Center's there, and they mm -hmm. do great work. So, I'd, But again, you're just being able to make sure we're covering as many of kids falling through the cracks and supporting the families that need to be supported so they can work and bring right. livelihood home. So it's been good. You will hear a lot about child care. You'll hear a lot about daycares or after school cares or child cares having wait lists. Yeah. Um, Ex just briefly sure. explain why there is a wait list. So in other words, you could increase your capacity by I think maybe like four to six kids, right? Mm -hmm. But the reason you can't increase the capacity is? So ours in Western Wayne is twofold. Staffing is number one. Right. So that continues to be a challenge for anybody that's doing child care. Right. You'll probably hear that from the next guest, I would assume. <laughs> so it's... Um, our industry, you're, it's this really unusual balance of trying to make the care for the child the best care possible at the rate that's going to help them the most. Mm -hmm. And it's a very challenging balance because you want your employees to make a good living wage. Um, but we're still struggling with that balance as well, just like anybody is at this point. Right. So you still have to cover your expenses. You still have to make sure... Um, and so we're, so at this point for us, it's purely a staffing issue. Right. Um, so we're short two staff right now. So to get us full to the 48, we need to get two additional staff hired to make that happen. Right. The law, the state law puts into those, because of safety measures, puts right. in criteria for how many adults to every child. So for an infant room, it's one adult to four babies. And you don't, you think, oh, that's, you can do more. No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> one like and sometimes you want one adult to two babies. <laughs> when imagine so. They're, they're all wanting to feed at the same time, and they all start crying, crying at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Um, so one adult to four, and then when you move into that toddler age, it's one adult to five. Okay. And then once you get to three-year-old, you can do one, one to ten. Okay. 
Um, so that, so to stay within those ratios to make sure that the children are being cared for in the right environment right. and the cared environment is what we have to do. And it's a balance. It's definitely a balance. It's a balance. Mm -hmm. um, tell us how you guys are, are governed. Tell us about your staff. I mean, sure. obviously you have openings, so sure. uh, many businesses are challenged with that. Many nonprofits are challenged with mm -hmm. that. So um, Yeah, we, we are governed too. by a board of directors. While the YMCA is a national organization, um, we... The Y charters local Ys, but they do not manage the local Y. We mm -hmm. have to meet certain standards, probably very similar to United Way. Yeah. Every right. reporting you have to do, dues that you pay to the right. national Y. Um, and, and there's standards that we have to uphold to their standards, but we are governed locally. Mm -hmm. Our assets are our assets. The dollars that come in support the local Y. Right. Um, and so we have a board of directors, and then then I'm the executive director that reports to that board. Our staff right now size is about 50, and that's full time and part time. Right. So I have staff that oversees um, the child care component. I have a full time staff now for sports, mm -hmm. and then we have the membership side and operations side of the organization. Wow. So it's. Um, being there eight years ago to where we are today, I think I had 10 employees eight years ago to where we are today. <laughs> and and then we'll talk about the possible expansion that's happening next year. So we're excited about it. Right. Yeah. So we have just, I mean, our time goes so quickly. I feel I like know. we could sit and we could talk all day because there's a lot of great work that the Y does. And um, we've been putting up some information while <laughs> we've been chatting. If you are interested in connecting with them, you want to volunteer, you want to get involved, you are interested in the open positions that Misty has, feel free to connect with her uh, via the uh, website, call. Um, but final um, question to you is what brings you the most joy about what you do? Oh, um, <laughs> getting out of bed every morning for the first time. Waking up is always a good oh thing, right? <laughs> Get another yes, day. I know. No, it, it's hard to say. I think for me the fulfillment is, because for us, our support system ranges from littles, infants, all the way up to our elderly that are members and mm -hmm. work out and just need to be able to participate in being in a place to see other adults. Mm -hmm. So I, so every day is a little bit different. Um, when I am having a pretty kind of distraught day or a grant didn't get approved or something, walking out on a sports field and seeing the kids out there or going into one of the child care sites just makes it worth it. Um, there's nothing better than seeing the light of the eyes of a kid that get excited about what's happening in their world right then. And, and you know with children, it's at that moment that's important. So, yeah. but it just, it really does make it, make it worth it every day. Well, thank you for what you do for the oh, community and all that the YMCA does to support um, our, our community well, We appreciate the United Way support very oh, much. Well, thank you. Anyway, when we come back, Jenny McCarroll from Firefly will be joining me. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Third Sector. Uh, Jenny McCarroll, who is the um, Director of Prevention Services for Firefly Children and Family Alliance, is joining me now. Welcome to the show, Jenny. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, we're happy that you joined us. Um, so tell us what Firefly Children and Family Alliance is. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and then we'll get to it being here in Richmond. Sure, yeah, definitely. So Firefly Children and Family Alliance is a nonprofit based out of Indianapolis. We do lots of different things across the state. Um, here locally, we serve what we consider Region 12, and that encompasses Fayette, Franklin, Union, Wayne, Rush, and Henry counties. We have an office out of Connersville that serves those counties. And um, we, we have a program called Community Partners for Child Safety, which is a child abuse prevention program. Mm -hmm. So we have a contract with the Department of Child Services to try to prevent child abuse and child neglect cases. So we do that by um, working with families in their home, providing case management services for free. It's a voluntary program. Um, we help families who might need assistance with housing, employment, um, parenting education, getting connected to resources. We have certified car seat technicians on staff. We can do safe sleep education and provide free pack and plays. Um, 
every family is different. All the needs are different. The whole point of the program is to make sure that families have their basic needs met and that kids are safe. Mm -hmm. um, so um, because we cover the the six counties out of that uh, out of that region, um, locally in Wayne County, we've been um, consistently doing our Community Partners for Child Safety program. And um, it's through that program uh, where the department this year has decided to fund um, five family resource centers across the state of Indiana. And Wayne County is one of those counties that was selected. So um, our agency currently operates four resource centers um, across the state in Madison, Delaware, Tipton, and Grant counties. Mm -hmm. uh, that's done through a partnership with the IU School of Social Work. And um, because of the impact those, those centers have had in their communities over the past several years, um, the department has decided to fund five uh, centers across the state, um, and Wayne County is one of the counties that was selected. So Wayne County was selected based on uh, some of the data points that we unfortunately rate high in, such as high infant mortality, drug overdose rates, things like that, but also because of community readiness and collaboration. There's a lot of people in the county that have heard of the other centers and were reaching out and kind of saying things like, how can we get one here? Mm -hmm. And um, so it just shows that there's that collaboration, community readiness, and um, here we are. So yeah. we we got that news back in January, and we just opened the center um, September 19th. So we're ready to serve families. And that's fantastic. So tell us where the center is located here in Richmond. Sure. It's at 714 North 12th Street. Mm -hmm. So it's on the north end of Richmond. It's actually a building that's owned by the Head Start organization. There used to be a Head Start classroom there. So we um, have a two-year lease to um, run the center out of that location. Um, it's a neat location. I've been able to, to stop by and see it uh, because it, it did just uh, very recently open. It's, uh, it's got playground. Mm -hmm. It's got a nice little um, like gazebo kind of uh, area that um, is great for um, people to just be able to sure. sit and relax or for the kids and so forth. What is the main goal of having that center here? So ultimately, because it's funded through the Department of Child Services, ultimately the goal is to prevent child abuse and child neglect places in Wayne County. So mm -hmm. um, the way we do that is by just being available and being uh, support to families. It's really just meant to be a stigma-free, safe place where families can come, ask questions, get connected. When a family walks in the door, we're going to say, what brings you in today? Um, so it's going to just be very straightforward as far as um, we don't want it to feel like it's that place or for those people. It's mm -hmm. for the entire community. Right. Um, we want people to know that it's a place that they can come if they need um, to ask questions about uh, their kids or um, where can I go if I need housing? What what should I do if I'm struggling with, um, with this thing or with that thing? Mm -hmm. So we have two full-time staff that are going to be at the center um, during open hours that can assess families and it might just be that we do a quick referral or a quick phone call to one of our amazing partners here in Wayne County and it might be that they might need a little bit more support or ongoing care um, and those families we might end up filtering through our community partners for child safety program if it's a family that might need some home visits or a little bit more one-on-one um, -on -one time with, mm -hmm. with a social worker but um, we're really just meant to be um, a place where people can come in and find out um, where they can go for support and also it's going to be a place where families can come to interact with one another and, and just have fun. So mm -hmm. we did our first family fun night um, Tuesday evening and um, had over 100 people come through. It was a great night. And um, we had some yard games set up. And um, one of the things we'd really like to focus on is having some free or low cost activities that families can come do together. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things we really focus on at the Family Resource Centers is building protective factors in families. And protective factors are basically the opposite of risk factors. Mm -hmm. So if parents are resilient and they understand their child and they enjoy their child and they they have these bonds with them and they, they understand maybe where their behavior is coming from, then they're going to be less likely to abuse or neglect them. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure we're offering opportunities where families can come and, and enjoy one another and, and um, gain some social supports too and see other parents and families and kind of say, hey, maybe we could get a play group going or, mm -hmm. um, you know, have you been struggling with this? This is something <clears throat> we're, we're, we're having an issue with. So it's really meant to help build those informal supports and, um, and just help them know that they're not alone. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a big part. We're, we're all a lot more alike than we are not. Absolutely. And I think that's one of those things that you, you know, we get into our own little world sometimes and it's hard to... To, to remember that. Right. Um, and so uh, it, 
that camaraderie can be helpful. Just that, you know, little bit sure. of a support system makes a big difference for people. Absolutely. Tell us a little bit about, um, so you mentioned you have two staff here mm -hmm. um, and you have the center here. What is um, kind of the goal for your first year of uh, being open? Is it sure. to, is it number of people you serve? Is it um, that they progress in a specific area or mm -hmm. we see a reduction in other kind of numbers? What, sure. what, what measures that the center is doing what you guys want it to do. Sure, so um, I think definitely getting some feedback from the community is one of the things that we're looking for. So mm -hmm. um, we, for me it's not necessarily about um, quantity or number of families that we can touch, it's really about making those personal connections with families and, mm -hmm. and letting the community know that we're here, we're available for support, those kinds of things. Um, we're definitely gonna be looking um, at, at, at numbers as far as child abuse and neglect cases filed. Um, Referrals to community partners can kind of help us measure some of those like quantitative data that we're looking at to try to see um, some of those differences. Um, but for us, it's really about um, being present and making some connections. So um, getting feedback from the families and the community to kind of hear um, that we're on the right track and we're offering the kinds of events that they'd like to do and the kind of activities that they want will help us kind of gauge some of that. But I think we can definitely look at numbers of people coming in the door and kind of, that's a great way to quantitatively measure. But I mm -hmm. also think um, feedback from families and just knowing that a family says, hey, because of you, I'm now in this spot. Or mm -hmm. um, knowing that um, they didn't have to maybe fall into uh, a, a situation where maybe they had, their children had to be removed or had to get DCS involved um, are definitely gonna be ways we also look at how we're kind of doing. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so do you guys, so one, I want to reiterate that, that for, if a family's watching this and they're like, I'd really like to go take a look at that, but mm -hmm. they say it's free, but I bet if I walk in the door, there's going to be something I'm going to have to give them money for something. Mm -hmm. um, it really is free support. Absolutely. hundred percent across all of what you have already just mentioned. Yes, absolutely. So um, we want families to know that we're available. We're there. Come in, ask questions. Um, any of the activities we do are going to be free or it would be posted if it wouldn't be. But um, mm -hmm. anything that we're sponsoring at the center ourselves would definitely be no cost to families. Mm -hmm. How do you guys, so you mentioned that you got a grant to get this going. Is the grant What's the lifespan of what the support does for the, the grant? Does the grant support for the um, for the center? Sure. So it's it's funded through a contract with the Department of Child Services. So it okay. kind of runs at the same time as our Community Partners for Child Safety contract. So um, we're hopeful that that will continue to roll into the next contract. That it'll mm -hmm. continue to fund um, the program pa past the current contract. Um, so, but currently it's tied in with that Community Partners for Child Safety work that we do. Mm -hmm. So are there, um, if people were like, oh, I'm so excited to hear about this, I want to support it in sure. some way, maybe yeah. they don't have kids or their kids are grown and sure. um, they've been in that space and they yeah. want to at a period of time when mm -hmm. maybe those supports weren't available for them, mm -hmm. um, what would be a way that people could, could do that? Sure. So. Um there's different ways people can help support uh, the center and the agency. Um, you know, we do have a process for volunteers because we work with families and children. There's definitely um, some background checks and things like that that would have to happen if someone wanted to actually volunteer at an event or help at, at something like that. Um, but, uh, you know, donating things that families might need because one of the things we're going to be doing at the center is offering concrete support. So things like take and make meals or um, child safety items, hygiene items, things like that. So a person could definitely donate things like that that families would be able to take um, at no cost to the family um, mm -hmm. back to their home. Um, you know, so donating items like that that we could use would be a great way to get involved. And then we're also looking for co-located services and people to come in and do programming. So mm -hmm. we really okay. want to um, have um, different uh, representation at the center. The center is not meant to take away from any of the good stuff that's already happening in Wayne County. We really just want to enhance, help work together, maybe collaborate a little bit more. So if anyone would be interested in um, any other partners, agencies, organizations would like to offer some kind of programming or event at the center, you know, we'd be happy to talk about how we might be able to partner and do that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be great. That collaboration, that partnership mm -hmm. is how we sort of holistically as a community help everybody Absolutely. help everybody out. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it is important for people to understand that, you know, you're coming into this space 
to help in a, in, in a way that is is just a little bit different in the carve out of helping you know uh, kids and families from what some of the other organizations that have been here for a long time do. It's not um, we're not competing. You're not trying Absolutely. to take away. This isn't. This is complementary and really Absolutely. something that's been kind of missed. I think um, one of the big components that I've heard you say is connecting them or helping them to resources. Mm -hmm. um, if you work in the nonprofit space, for our viewers, help people getting connected to resources can be one of the most difficult things. It's hard to ask for help Absolutely. if you, you know, have to. You get pointed to somebody and they don't help you or they're not kind. You often aren't likely to try to go for that help again, um, and it's really difficult when you don't get that personalized sort of when you say a warm handoff that means picking up the phone or I'm I'm going to somebody and I'm saying hey in person or on the phone we mm -hmm. have something can you help me with this and here's this person and call this person with this name not just call this number um, I think that's a huge component um, mm -hmm. and so it's definitely um, in a lot of the work I do I see this as a as a great opportunity to bring a lot of really great support to the community. So I think it's very exciting. Yeah, we're um, really excited. Thank yeah, um, <clears throat> and it's a cute little location. Mm -hmm. um, so we've talked about how people can donate goods, they can donate their time. Mm -hmm. um, tell me what brings you the most joy about what you do. That's a really hard question because I have a really awesome job. I've been at Firefly Children Family Alliance for 12 years and um, been in my current role for about four. And um, I think um, from direct service with families and, and the work that I do with families still today, I think what brings me the most joy is just knowing that um, I can maybe be that light or that spot, um, that bright spot and in a time where things could be really dark. Um, I think being able to walk side someone who's going through something really um, difficult or painful is, is a privilege to be able to kind of be that person to stand by them and say like, hey, I'm here with you. I don't know all the answers, but I'm going to be here through it with you. And to, I've had a lot of families over the years that, you know, call back after a few months or after a year and say, hey, I'm in this spot again. And I, I just thought of you. I don't know what to do. So just if someone can feel comfortable asking for help, I think to me that's what brings me the most joy because like you just said, that's something I think about all the time is how hard it is even in, for us in our own lives to admit when we're struggling with something or might need mm -hmm. some support. And so I think um, if, if I can help a family feel comfortable reaching out, you know, then, then that's the ultimate payback, I think, in, yeah. in what I'm doing. So. All right. Well, we're going to leave it there for today. Our time goes quickly. Um, as we wrap this episode, I'd like to thank my guest, uh, Misty Hollis from Richmond Family YMCA, and of course, Jer Jenny McCarroll uh, from Firefly, uh, Firefly <laughs> Children and Family <laughs> Alliance. That's a tongue twister. Mm -hmm. uh, stay well, and we'll see you next time on The Third Sector.